Glory to God. Acts chapter 3, and let's go down here to verse 19. Repent you therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times, everybody say times, the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. You know, waking up, uh, you know, after a good sleep, there is, uh, how many know it's good to wake up refreshed? Uh, there's something about waking up refreshed. There's something about resting in the Lord. There's something about a new day. There's something about a new season. We can enter into a new season in life. We can enter into new things so, so that we get excited about new things in our life. Amen? You know, the word keros in the Greek uh, is the word for times. The times, plural, times of refreshing. Keros uh, literally means appointed times. Uh, in the Hebrew, we would call that a moed. Uh, it's a moed in the uh, Hebrew. What that means is there are appointed times with God. Appointed times that God just shows up and shows out and does great things in your life. It is time for a for a charis. There's time for a moed. It's time for God to come alongside and enter into that, that rest with you. Enter into that place where there is a refreshing. There are times, there are moeds of refreshing. I believe this is a day and this is an hour for a refreshing. Amen? Amen. You know, there's so much stress and so much junk going on out there in the world. But how many know we're not in the world? We're of a different kingdom. And the kingdom has scheduled times of refreshing. Hallelujah. Who glory to God. You know, the seventh day of each week is a Sabbath. It is a time of refreshing. It's a time of resting. Uh, every seven times seven, uh, or every seventh year, let's say that, every seventh year there is a, uh, a time or a season that God puts in our lives. Uh, but more than that, there is what is called a seven times seven plus one, which is a jubilee. Now how many know a jubilee is the ultimate of the rest? There, it is the ultimate of the good things of God being released. It is a jubilee. Come on, somebody. Now, Jesus has become our rest. Jesus has become our jubilee. Jesus has become that rest. He has become, in Him there is a rest. In Him there is a joy. In Him is the refreshing. Come on. He's right here, right now. He goes with you everywhere you go. That refreshing is right there. That rest that we enter in is right here, right now. You can take hold of it. You can rest in it. You can press into it. You can press into a jubilee. Now, a jubilee is where all debts were canceled. Come on, somebody. Ever had a debt canceled? It's a good thing. <laughs> Amen. I mean, there's a rejoicing going on. Amen. It, all the debts are canceled. You're, uh, you know, if you had someone sold into slavery because of taxes, or I mean, well, maybe not, but <laughs> that's how it was back in the Old Testament. They got to return home. Those that were in all kinds of bondage and everything got free. A jubilee. Now how many know Jesus became the ultimate jubilee on the cross? He became the ultimate jubilee that we are in Him and in His rest. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Seven times seven plus one. Fifty. Turn with me to Exodus chapter 31. You know, another word for, for refresh, to refresh, is the word rest. Hallelujah. And I don't know about you, but I want to enter into that rest this morning. Exodus chapter 31. And go down here to uh, verse 17. Exodus 31, verse 17. Thank you, Lord. It is a sign between me, this is God talking, it is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. 
For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and, come on somebody, and was refreshed. Glory be to God. Woo! <laughs> God saw creation and he was refreshed. He said, it is good. We've got to be the same exact way as God. We've got to see what God is doing in our life and be refreshed. We've got to see what He's creating in our life. We've got to see what He's doing today. He's doing some great things today in your life. He is doing exceeding abundantly above what you could ask or think. And as you see what God is doing, it will refresh you. Just as it refreshed, it refreshed God, it will refresh you you if you focus on what God is doing. God focused on what He did, and He was refreshed. Hallelujah. We've got to stay focused. We've got to stay focused on the good things. We've got to focus on what the God things. We've got to stay focused on what God is doing in our lives. It is so easy to focus on the negative things. It is so easy to focus on what's going wrong in our lives. You know, as I was going over this this past week, I, God just was dealing with me. Focus on all these good things that are happening. Amen? Because it's so easy to get your focus on something else. And the enemy will magnify the negative. He'll focus on that, and he'll get your focus on it, and he'll just mess with you on it. But how many know... There are good things happening in your life. You focus on those things. You put the joy back in. You put the rest back in. You put the refreshing. You enter into what God is doing. God's doing a new thing. God's doing a great thing. God has done great things. Woo, David reminded himself. <laughs> He's up against this giant. He, he's going to go up against him, and he's going to slaughter him. And, and, and how many know David was puny? David was the least of the brothers. David was like, you know, but I, I, you know, he was reminding himself of when he tackled the bear. And when he come against, you know, the lion. All these different things that were coming against his, his flock. And he conquered them. And he was going to conquer this uncircumcised Philistine, this one who did not have a covenant with God. You have a covenant with God this morning. Every single person in this room has a covenant with God. Well, I just don't feel worthy. It doesn't matter. God made you worthy by the blood. I believe he'll do it for somebody else. He won't do it for me. How many know you're a whosoever? Come on, somebody. You got that. Come on. God said, whosoever. He's got something good for you right now. He's trying to get it to you. He's trying to show you his creation of what he's creating in your life. And he says, it will refresh you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Be grateful. That's really what God's saying. Be grateful. Be grateful. Be grateful for the good things. Be grateful for all the things He's doing in your life right now and the things He's done before. And if you can't think of one good thing that He's done in your life, then my goodness, you better realize He allowed you to wake up this morning. Put breath in your lungs. Hallelujah. And He gave you a reason to believe for good things. Quit Focusing on the negative and focus on the positive. Amen? Amen? Glory be to God. Be refreshed. Be refreshed. I, I, I remember uh, years ago in the 90s, uh, everybody wanted a revival. And I, I didn't want to do an extended revival where, you know, we're in our 164th week. You know, I, I, I just didn't want to do that. And most of the reason I didn't want to do that was I was scheduled every week. So I'd have to cancel all these churches to do 146 weeks or whatever. But we were still doing, you know, Sunday through Wednesday or Sunday through Thursday at most churches. And, and we'd get home 
traveling with my wife and my daughters. We'd get home for one day, turn around, and take off again the next day. And be gone for the next week, and then get home for one day, get, you know, the laundry done, get this done, that, you know, and then pack up and get on the road for the next thing. And when my girls went off to Rama, uh, I, I, I started traveling myself, but now I was traveling by plane. I was flying everywhere, but how many know I was running in and out of airports every week, running here. I'd get into a hotel room and didn't know where I was at. I'd say, what town am I in? I'd wake up and I'd think, you know, and, and don't ever wake up in a hotel room and jump up out of bed and run because you'll run into the wall because <laughs> that's not the same room as at home. And, and you think you're at home, and you think you're somewhere, and you get up and you run right into the wall because there's a wall right there. Well, well, there, that's how I was. I was just running, 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 running. But early on in, in this mess, I, I said, Lord, you're going to have to show me how to do this. I, I can't keep up this schedule. It's just go, go, go. How many have ever felt like that? Go, 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 whatever you might be doing. And the Lord said something to me so clearly. He said, take a nap. Now, you may think that wouldn't be from God, but he believes in Sabbath. He believes in resting. He believes in taking a nap. There are times where you need to rest in the Lord. There is a refreshing that will keep you going. I learned how to rest. I was not a good person on resting. I, I was always, you know, get me going and I'm going 100 miles an hour and I, I just, and I had loved it. I loved going 100 miles an hour. But one, one day I learned how to rest in the Lord. And I learned how to take a nap. I learned how to, you know, how many know we need to have a good work ethic? We need to be working. I mean, I, I didn't get, you know, uh, scheduled every week going, and many weeks I was speaking at five different places in that week. I mean, I was going. I didn't have that because I didn't have a work ethic. I had a very strong work ethic. I mean, I'm constantly communicating with pastors every single week. But I didn't have a strong rest ethic. <laughs> I didn't know how to rest. But I learned that. God showed me the importance of resting. I mean, the Lord said every seventh year we're supposed to let the land rest so that it would keep its nutrients. Amen? How many know that for many, many thousands of years, they kept the land every seventh year? They didn't plant. Now they plant every single year because of greed. They constantly are planting here, planting that. Matter of fact, they'll plant one crop and then they'll start planting in another crop as they're bringing out the other one. I mean, literally depleting the soil of all nutrients and you think you're getting the same food that they ate 50 years ago and you're not. There's something about the rest. There's something about the refreshing. There's something about getting you strong. There's something about resting in the Lord that will make you strong in the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And we've got to learn these things because you, you can get weary and you can get tired. And in and, and being weary, you're, you're, you just don't care. And many times I, I got to a point where I was weary. Years ago, I'd, I'd get weary and I didn't care about some things. And then I noticed, I said, you know what? I need to get back on track here because I'm, 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 I'm not feeling that joy that I need to be feeling. I'm not, I got to get back into his presence where there is fullness of joy. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Whoo! I said glory be to God. The Lord said this very clearly to me one day. We were traveling with the girls. They had kids for us, and they, you know, they were asked by all the major, I mean, big mega churches if they'd come on staff. My girls said, no, we're with my dad. Hallelujah. And, and they, they ministered at Southwestern, Western, Southwest Believers Convention, uh, uh, several years, and I mean, they, they were going, going, going with us, and I'd speak to the adults, and they'd speak to the, you know, have children revivals. We were going, 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 and the Lord said something else to me. He said, stop and smell the roses. 
stop and smell the roses. And I said, Lord, I, I, you know, I don't have time to stop and smell. You said, yes, you do. And so if we were passing by the Grand Canyon, instead of running past it, we stop and went look at it. When we were in California, we'd, we'd take the kids to Disneyland back when it was good. And we would go to a lot of, a lot of places. We, you know, the, the Arch in St. Louis and uh, uh, wherever we were. We, you know, I remember uh, Washington, D.C. and, and, and uh, uh, Mount Rushmore and all these places. What we did was we made it enjoyable instead of making it running, 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 running. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We stopped along the way to smell the roses. You're going to stop and smell the roses this week. You know, if I, if I go past a, a really nice rose bush, I, I tend to stop and smell it in the natural. And it's good. <laughs> Amen. Turn with me to Philemon, right there uh, before Hebrews. Philemon, chapter 1. Hallelujah. Times of refreshing that come from the presence of the Lord. Philemon, chapter 1, because there's <clears throat> only one chapter, uh, verse 6. That the communication or fellowship of your faith, everybody say faith, which you have toward the Lord Jesus, go the communication of your faith may become effectual, active, by the acknowledging, this is how it happens, by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Who hallelujah. The sharing of your faith, the fellowship of your faith, becomes active. How? By the acknowledging of what you have in Christ. You've got to acknowledge it for yourself, and you've got to share it with somebody else. Focused on the good things. Focused on what God is doing in your life. The active. Hallelujah. Make it active. Make your faith active. Look what the next verse says. Verse 7. Uh, acknowledging every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus, for we have great joy <laughs> and comfort in your love because the hearts of the saints are refreshed. Everybody say refreshed. By you, brother. So we're, we're acknowledging Every good thing, not the bad things. You know, when I do counseling, I don't concentrate on the past. Most counselors will, will focus on the problem. And, and they'll spend weeks, sometimes months, on the problem. How many know the problem is not where you start? You start on the good thing. In marriage counseling, what I do is I, I say, write down ten things of why you got together. Come on, somebody. Yes. Why? Because if you're focused on the good things, you'll start moving forward. If you focus on the bad things, you're moving backward. Average counselor out there will spend weeks and months on, on how horrible you were and blah, 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 and how bad life you had, and this is why you are what you are, and blah. No, who are you in Christ? What is God doing in your life? If you spend so much time looking in the rear view, rear view mirror, you're going to crash. Focus on what God is doing in you now, the good things that He's doing in you now, and give yourself a future. 
Well, you don't know what I've gone through, Pastor. You don't know. I was abused as a child. I was this. I was that. I had this problem. I, 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 I you know, and, and, and women have, will say men and all kinds of horrendous things. But you don't live there. Well, how do I move on? You see that you are now a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. The blood of Jesus now covers you. And give yourself a future. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Encourage one another. Rise up. Don't focus on, don't always focus on it's not working. Focus on God. Get His wisdom. He'll show you. He will show you how to win. Turn with me to Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. Let me know the Lord is good. Mark chapter 6. Hey, let's go down here, verse 30. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 6, verse 30. And the apostles gathered themselves together to Jesus and told Him all the things, both what they had done and what they had taught. I mean, they're excited. They just come back from preaching. And Jesus said to them, Come you yourselves apart into the desert. Come aside into the desert place for a rest, for a rest and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure. Let's say leisure. So, so as much as they even eat, they were just running. Now they were excited about serving God, but boy, they got to a point where Jesus had to take them along, you know, uh, take them to the desert. I mean, he had to get them out of the town, get them out of preaching, get, get them aside for leisure. Can you, can you, can you imagine this? How many know you, you need, I have a day off. My wife doesn't seem to realize it, but I have a day off. I tell her, I don't get honeydews on Mondays. Anyway. It started to work a while, but then we got grandkids. Anyway, no. <laughs> you have to schedule times of rest. You have to schedule it. You have to schedule it, and you have to stand by it, and you have to have times of leisure. You have to, you have, to have times of vacation. Preferably Monday through <clears throat> Tuesday. Or Thursday through Saturday. It's longer. Do the. Th no, that, now we've got. <laughs> you have to do it Friday and Saturday. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Schedule vacations. Schedule. And even if. if, it, if you know, well, I don't have the money to go on a big vacation. I don't, I don't have time to do that. Then just take you know, a couple days and go to the harbor. Take a couple days and go to, you know, the stockyards in Fort Worth. I don't know. Just find somewhere where you can go and just take some time of leisure. Amen? Jesus says to His disciples, you've been running. And He says, there are times of refreshing. And he says to them, if you come with me to a desert place, he said, leisure. Everybody say leisure again. The Word of God says, I want you to have times of leisure. Jesus said it. Jesus is saying it to you right now. How many know in this society, in this world right now, there is more reason to be running and running and running Traffic's getting worse in this small town, which is no longer small. I mean, <laughs> there are just all kinds of things going on. But you can enter into a peace. 
You can enter into a refreshing. You can enter into a rest. Take time, Jesus said, for leisure. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Whoo. Hallelujah. We got to do that. Take a nap. Come on, somebody. Smell the roses. Do whatever it takes. Amen. Grace. Grace. Resting in the Lord. Toil is a part of the curse. Toil is running here and running there, trying to make a living, trying to do this, trying to do that. But without God, it's toil. When you do it in yourself, it's the flesh. And it's stressful. When you do it in the Lord, there's a refreshing. And it works. When I, I was selling timeshare years and years ago, don't blame me, it was a job. And, and, and uh, I, I'd, I'd go to that job and... Uh, I just enjoyed it. And I prayed, you know. I prayed, I, under my breath, I was praying while I'm, you know, with that person, selling. But I wasn't really selling. I was asking the Lord the whole time, what do I say? What should I say to this person? What should I say to that person? I became the number one in that company, the number one salesman in the country for timeshare. Why? Because I didn't toil. I let God guide me. I entered into a rest. God became my co-pilot. I entered into a leisure even in the labor. Come on somebody. God's trying to show you a rest. He's trying to show you a Sabbath. He's trying to show you. See, the Word of God says that, that the Sabbath, we try to make it a, a, a law how many know that, that uh, it's a spiritual thing? Jesus even said, because they, you know, they caught Jesus and the disciples working, doing things on the Sabbath. And he said, don't you know Sabbath was made for man? Not man for the Sabbath. In other words, so that you would learn how to rest so that you would learn how to rest in grace, that you would learn how to rest in trust, that you would learn how to rest in God, that you would be grateful and appreciative of creation, that Sabbath, that seventh day, that jubilee time, that you would learn how to thrive. You thrive because you have all the nutrients. You thrive because you're in God. You thrive because you have all of what you need and the strength to do it. And the strength comes from the refreshing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3. There is a refreshing in the rest. Well, if I, if I rest too much, I, I won't get anything done. You know, you'll get twice as much done. Now, I'm not talking about being lazy. I'm talking about having a great work ethic, but taking times for rest. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the work won't be toil. The work will be guided by the Holy Spirit. The work will be a God thing. Amen? When you're trying to do it, it doesn't work. How do you know it doesn't work? Because you're not happy anymore. You're stressed out. You're wondering, how are we going to make it? And the whole time, God already made it for you. Hebrews chapter 3. Chapter 3, go down here to verse uh, 15. Thank you, Lord. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 15. While it is said today, if 
if you will hear God's voice, harden not your hearts in as it was in the provocation uh, when they rebelled against God in the wilderness. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. However, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom uh, was he grieved? Forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swore he that they should not enter into his rest? Everybody say rest. But to them that believe not. So we see that they could not enter into the promised land. They couldn't in, enter into the promises because of unbelief. Chapter 4, verse 1. Let us therefore reverence, lest a promise be left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem uh, to come short of it. My, 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 my. For to us was the gospel, the good news preached, as well as to them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we have, uh, for we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he spoke in a certain place of the seventh day. Hallelujah. The seventh day on this wise. And God said, uh, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in, and in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. Faith works by resting. Faith works by trusting. Faith works by resting in God. Hallelujah. Go down here to verse, verse 9. There remains therefore a rest to the people of God. <laughs> For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works, as God did from His. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. It is, it is actually unbelief or not believing God. It is not faith to be doing it in toil. Our labor is faith. Our labor is faith. We are laboring to enter into this rest. Our faith is entering into that rest. When you enter into the rest, you're really saying, I trust God. I've been running, 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 trying to get it my way. Now I'm just going to trust God. Now you've entered into a rest what kind of rest? You're not toiling. You're not trying to do it your way. You're not trying to do it yourself. You're letting God guide you. He's your co-pilot. He's right there with you. He's right there with you right now. He's trying to show you some things right now. There is a faith that you labor to get to that's by resting. It's by trusting. That is a labor of faith. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We're not in toil. We're in grace. Does that mean we don't have to work anymore? You know, there are people today that think grace means you don't have to pray, you don't have to tithe, you don't have to do this, you don't have to do that. No, we get to do all those things. Grace is not a license to sin. It's a license to win. We rise up in grace. We rise up knowing now we have certain principles and certain wisdom that causes us to win. And so God is trying to get you out of the curse and get you into the blessing and get you out of toil and be your partner. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 11.
Remember Peter in the, the boat who toiled all night. All he did was admit that he did it all night by himself without God. Matthew chapter 11. And go down here to um, verse 28. Matthew 11, verse 28. Come to me, Jesus talking, come to me all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And really he could have said it this way, all you that have been toiling, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me and learn the way I do it. For I am meek. Hallelujah. Gentle. And lowly in heart. And you shall find rest to your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When you would see two oxen and that yoke, that wooden thing that sat on their necks that caused them to, to work together. God is saying, I want to work with you. My yoke is, is easy. My burden is light. I'm trying, I'm trying to carry the load. I'm trying to give you the wisdom. I'm trying to show you how to do this where it works and that it's easy. There is a freedom in that. There is a rest in that. Back in the garden, Adam was not toiling. He was working the garden by faith. He still had to work. But how many know when he worked that garden, it was a joy. God wants your life to be a joy. Well, my life will be a joy when we get this done. My, my life will be a joy when I finally get to this point in my business. My life will be a, a joy when we get... No, the joy is in the journey. As we stay in His joy and we stay resting in Him, glory be to God, He'll put us in the right place at the right time. He'll bless you with this and bless you with that, and you just show up. I, I, I tell you, the, so many times where I just showed up and God advanced me and advanced ministry and did this and did that, and all I did was show up because he told me to do something. He's about to tell you to do something. He's about to cause you to be in the right place at the right time. You're about to be in a refreshing that there's a joy on it and you're expecting. That is the rest that brings forth the, the real faith. The faith that knows everything's going to be okay. The faith that knows, my goodness, God is right dab in the middle of this. And my God, if He's for me, who can be against me? And you rise up in Him, and you don't believe the lies. Don't focus on the lies anymore. Don't focus on the negative anymore. Well, that's easy for you to say, you've got everything going just so wonderful. Oh, my goodness. Every single person in this room is going through something that you're going through. You're not staying there. And your tomorrow is bright if you focus on the good things. Don't focus on the wrong things. Don't focus on the bad things. Focus on Jesus. Jesus is about to show you something. And it's going to bring you to the next level. And it's going to put a smile back on your face. And it's good. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Don't hang around with people that tell you it's not going to work. You know, that's why it's so important that we come together for the uplifting of the faith. You know, some people call this a faith church or word of faith church or word church, spirit-filled church. There's so many different titles and tabs. And let me tell you something. We come together for the uplifting of the faith. The Word of God says we come together for the uplifting of the faith. We come to get encouraged. We come to believe the Word. We come to find out who we are in Christ. We come to find out what we have in Christ. So we can charge the day again. So that we can seize the day again. So that we can go forward in the week again. So, so that we can get refreshed. Get rest for our 
weary souls <laughs> and rise up in Him. There's something about the refreshing. There's something about waking up refreshed. There's something about ready to go. And that's how this week's going to be for you. You're going to wake up refreshed tomorrow. You're going to be ready to go. You're going to re be ready to seize the day and know that your God is with you. And it's not by toil. It's by His presence. It's by His wisdom. It's by His knowledge. It's about Him doing it. It's about Him putting you in the right place at the right time. It's about Him. Then He gets all the glory. I said He gets all the glory. Hallelujah. There's a yoke. His yoke is easy. Who are you connected to? Who are you connected to? Are you connected to Jesus? Are you yoked with Jesus? Or are you connected to the world? Are you connected to the problems? Are you connected to this? Are you connected to that? What are you connected to today? If it's Jesus, you're connected to the refreshing. Hallelujah. There's a labor, a labor of faith, resting in the Lord. And He will lead you into the times of refreshing. And those times, they come by faith. I'm going to end this morning in Psalm 46. Anybody get anything out of this this morning? Psalm 46. Hallelujah. Psalm 46, and uh, the Lord is good. Oh, hallelujah. <clears throat> Psalm 46, let's go down here to verse 10. I, I love this. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. He's with us. The Lord of hosts is with us. God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. The word Selah means to think or meditate on what you just heard. If we meditated on this, the very first area is be still. Be still. Literally that word there, be still, means to rest. Be still. Rest. It also means to cease from your toil. Be still. Peace. Peace. Relax. Be still. And know. And no, that word no there is the word yada. It means an intimate knowing. God speaking directly to you. God being God. Be still. Enter into that rest. Relax. Enter into that peace. And know that He is God. Know that He's a big God. Know that everything now is going to be okay. Be still and know that He is God. That He's God in your life. That He's God right now. Be still and know that He's God. Let go and let God. Know that He is a good God, a big God, and big enough. Be still and know that He's your God. Say, thank you, Lord, for the rest. Thank you, Lord. I will rest in the Lord and be refreshed. I will be still and know God is faithful. I am entering into 
the times, the moeds, the seasons of refreshing. The best is yet to come. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. God's healing somebody's teeth right now. Hallelujah. Might be in the gums, might, but that God's healing you right now. Your jaw. Especially a couple people. Glory to God. Just receive it right where you're at. God's healing an ankle right there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God's healing some headaches you've been having. Those headaches don't belong to you. Glory to God. Somebody healing a, a toenail. That toenail is being healed right now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're going to hear some praise reports. Glory. I feel the anointing of God. Whoo, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Somebody's scalp is being healed right now. Hallelujah. Whoo, glory to God. There are doors of opportunity opening right now. Doors that were closed are opening right now. But more than that, there are new doors that are bigger. God is doing great things. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory be to God. 